<laughs> you are watching, you'll never be the same. This is Dr. Gershom Sekala. I believe that there is, an, there is a miracle with your name on it. There is nothing impossible with God. Whatever you've been praying for, wishing for, God has already provided. His name is Jehovah Jireh, which means he has supplied before there is a need. Let me tell you, miracles happen when you believe in the name of Jesus. We have seen all kinds of miracles. I just came back from Columbus, Ohio. I was speaking with uh, John Maxwell, one of the top leader in the world, when it, I think, when it comes to leadership teachings. The man is incredible. He has written John Maxwell Bible. You know, we had, I was teaching about breaking the mindset of poverty, and we saw miracles like death years being opened in the business meeting and conference. Hallelujah. Called Time to Lead Conference. But I'm so excited. I have a lot to share. We have a mastery class in Glendale, California. We have been seeing a lot of change and transformation. Send forth your daughters and your sons and yourself come because it's a time to really uh, uh, release what God has already put in you because there's greatness that arise inside you. It's a mastery class because we are looking at what you, I'm helping you to find your passion, to find God's given plan for your life. Remember, God is a God of purpose. God is a God of plan. And God is a God of design. Everything you need is in Christ Jesus. But anyway, is anybody sick? Is anybody wants a miracle? Stay on because God is going to touch you. We'll be talking about women. And we'll be talking about, what I mean about that, we'll be talking about women movement. And we'll be talking about what God is doing here in California in high schools. Uh, get your daughters and your sons, let them tune. And even you, uh, as a father and a mother, you, you need to stay tuned because God is going to touch your life. And I have great guests with me. I have Susan Gouts. Uh, she's a wonderful friend of mine, and she has been there for me with our ministry. I don't know how much I can say thank you to this woman of God that has really helped me. You know, one of the things to know that greatness does not happen without having great people around you. You see, uh, 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 there is no success without great people people around you. True success happens by being with the right people, right women, and that's amazing. Susan has been such a blessing. She's all the way from uh, Susan. She's, uh, Susan, she's married, a mother of six, born in the uh, inner city of Detroit, a teenager mother, a high school dropout who had much to overcome in her life. At the age of 25, Susan gave our life to God and began a lifelong journey with him. Filled with healing and hope for most of our adult life, she had been a business owner and ministry leader as well as a founder of two nonprofit organizations. Wow. Dedicated to serving, dedicated to serving women all over the world, starting with, with, with Central California. Our passion is to see women rise up, the Deborahs, the Astors, uh, to, be, to rise up and, and, and to read them, to read their families and communities to love and the power of God has been work at work in Susan's life. You know, I'm so excited to have her here. I want you to get our book. And I don't know if it's on Amazon yet, but it's on our website. It's on Amazon. It's on Amazon. You can go to Amazon and get your copy. This book will bless your life. You know, um, I'm going to start with Susan, then I'm going to introduce uh, Waze and then Denaro. But, but I would like to, to say, um, how did you, uh, w w what's the background of you writing a book? You know, we have many people that write about books. What, what is this new women movement? Well, um Thanks. Um, by the way, Gershom, thank you also for having me here, and thank you for your friendship also. It, actually, the whole reason that I wrote a book, a considerable amount of it has to do with Gershom's influence in my life as, um, as he's encouraged me in my walk with the Lord. Uh, the Lord had for many years talked to me about writing a book. Uh, I 
was not uh, very secure or confident enough to really step out to do that. But in the past few years, he kept increasing this revelation and uh, showing me more and more just the pain in the world, the pain that women carry, uh, the pain in marriage, the pain in divorce, uh, the, um, the emptiness that we carry as women as, and the frustration in trying to, to find answers in our marriages. And so many times we go to um, teachings that I don't want to be negative about the church, but I think we've misinterpreted some things that the Lord may have wanted us to understand about marriage. And if we come from a place of misinterpretation, uh, we really don't have a lot of hope. So uh, this... I always say, you know, Susan, sorry for interrupting. That's fine. But I always say that if you believe wrong, you, yes. you pray wrong. Yes. Mm. If you believe right, you get it right. So this book, it's, it's a mind detox. It's bringing a right alignment, a right knowledge. What you need in life to succeed, you just need the right knowledge. And Susan, she's here uh, uh, bringing this into your home and into your family so that you can have a successful life as a woman. You can have a fulfilled life. You could be single. You could be married because I know that God has got a great plan for your life. You know, mm -hmm. Susan, you, you, you know, you have a passion for, 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 for why is it that um, it's important for these women to understand uh, their, their place in the church, in the government, in the working place, because you have been a you, you've been a wife, you have been a, a business owner, and you have been a, you are now a grandmother yes, too. So you have been in all <laughs> this. So now there are women watching out there; they want to find their purpose. Why is it that they? Why is the women, new women in? I like the title, by the way, Thank new you. women movement because it shows a woman that is 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. If anyone is in Christ, is a new creation. So this is a woman that has been washed in the blood. Amen. So we are talking about a woman that has been washed in the blood. Why is it important that they find their purpose? Well, I think it's important, especially now, because God is really breathing on women. His focus is on women. His, uh, his perspective right now is on women. And it's, it's always important to move as God moves mm. and be in the season and in the timing of the Lord. And we can see that politically, there's a large uh, amount of women who are talking about rallying together. And we're seeing that happening because really that is the intention of the Lord. But his intention or his focus is on the women, but his ultimate focus is on the men. He wants to get to the men through the women because it's the collaborative relationship mm -hmm. of men and women together that release the power of God on Amen. this planet. When we look at Adam and Eve and working together, they were in one body when they named every animal on the planet. They were in one body. So we're talking about the release of the spirit of God, the release of his presence and power, creativity to solve problems. We're talking about a major move of God as the sanctity of marriage is restored. And how God is going to get there is to begin with the women. Well, I, I, that's really very powerful. I want you to get this book. And Susan, she had a heaven experience. Uh, you know, we will talk about heaven experience that she had, that the Lord Jesus Christ touched in one of our meetings and took her to heaven and, and gave her about three or four things. Uh, it gave you about how many things? Uh, well, he put three things in my hand, a paintbrush, uh, because I paint, a microphone, and I speak, now I speak, and a pen. And, of course, I've written this book. And, and that and happened several years ago. Mm -hmm. And we will be back to talk about that. Now, just hold your thoughts, tell your kids, listen about a high school. Here is Wazy, who has been a revivalist. What I mean by the revivalist, bringing life back into school, into the students, into the pupils. You know, they need to experience God's presence. Wazy, what's, what has driven you to, to, to go into these high schools? Wow, so I wrote the vision. I made it plain, and there was an appointed time to run with it. Um, I was a youth pastor for four years, and I had 
uh, one of the kids that were in the uh, youth group, they became a teacher and they were at El Segundo High School. So we had an opportunity to go down there and share, thinking that we were going to start a Christian club. Uh, when that happened, there was fellowship of Christian athletes there, and they had already been on the campus. So I met with the guy, and this was outside of the scope of where God had showed us to plant um, when it comes to the schools, and that's the San Fernando Valley. So we went out to El Segundo High School by the airport, and uh, we shared, and I met the guy over the Los Angeles region. He said, you have to meet the guy over the San Fernando Valley. He's the area representative, and I think you guys are going to fit well together. Uh, he's a messianic Jew, so am I. And uh, we connected immediately, and the doors have been flying wide open ever since. And my heart has been for the youth because I want to see the generation that God's marked to live for something so out loud that they're willing to die for what they believe. Mm -hmm. And I want to see them live for a purpose, and that purpose being to magnify the one that created them for his image and that they would live in his image and bring that image into this earth and move out that false image because we know there's a lot of counterfeits out there. And we're seeing a lot of people that have been self-absorbed and sucked up by the culture and even given themselves to witchcraft and certain things. And we're seeing them turn their whole life in to Christ and follow him right on these campuses, these public schools, um, 18 schools we spoke about. And one of the schools that's been impacted uh, the most as of recent is in Canoga Park. And we've seen things on that campus that the scripture talks about, no eye is seen, no ear is heard, nor has entered the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love him. And we've even seen discipleship. Uh, we're seeing a movement of the spirit where kids are celebrating Jesus and standing up on their chairs and proclaiming the name of Jesus. It's a radical time on these campuses. We're seeing volunteers come alongside, people that have a heart burning for the youth, and they're coming on these campuses, sharing their stories, helping out, pass out pizza, and we're seeing thousands and thousands of kids surrender their lives to Christ. Wow, thousands and thousands. Oh, how I love to see every school in the United States to come to the knowledge of knowing Jesus. I don't know, I don't know if we have the video ready there, but uh, uh, to just show a little bit of a clip, maybe a second or so, what's going on in high school. While they're getting ready for the video, I would like to, to introduce to you Danny Danalo. Danalo, what, we have been doing homeless ministry and also high school ministry. What, are, what has been God doing there? Wow. Well, just, uh, just want to thank you, uh, Dr. Gresham. It's such an honor um, because of your influence, because of your love and commitment to uh, young leaders like us that were rising up. Uh, we see the city changing. So I'm thinking of uh, yesterday, Canoga High School is actually one of my high schools that I went to. It's just kind of ironic how God will bring me back in there and now a troublemaker. Uh, I, I used to go to summer schools because I, I, I couldn't catch up on my, my assignments and God will take me back in there to, uh, to speak to them. Uh, mm -hmm. And the story that I'm thinking is at 18, uh, I didn't have guidance, I didn't have uh, enough of a mentorship or, co or, or a coaching about this Christian walk and I went and I got married. That led me into a, a path of so much headache, so much brokenness, and then God's just taking me back in there and speaking life into them. So I just want to testify on that a little bit. As we're walking, uh, uh, Wes invited me to speak, and uh, as, I'm, as I'm speaking, uh, I hear the voice of God. I was just asking, asking God, what do you want me to say? Um, what is it that is going on? Um, I just want to hear your heart, God, because I know what I remember where I was on, on that age. And then I heard God say, um, just as that person, uh, uh, it was highlighted that that person had a pain on the ankle. So I stopped the meeting, I stopped the teaching, and uh, I just asked, uh, I asked the, the, the young man, I was like, is that true that your ankle's hurting? And he's like, yes, it is. So I was like, uh, do me a favor, just touch your ankle, and God is going to release power, and he's going he's gonna to heal you. And he, he did, and, and the, he felt the, the power of God touch the ankle, and he started freaking out. He's like, oh, my God, he's getting healed, he's getting healed. So I believe we're, we're a generation that we're looking for that, that for a long time I grew up, I grew up Catholic, uh, 13, I got introduced to Christianity, I did the religious thing, but until the encounter, until the presence of God, it hits you, I believe that's where transformation, that's where everything begins to happen and heaven touches earth. Amen. When heaven, you know, I don't teach about just going to heaven, 
I teach about bringing heaven to your community, to your school, to your church. And that's what Danilo and Wazy, his friend, they are doing. They are taking heaven into this place. Let me tell you, there, there is no drug problem. There is no prostitution problem. The problem that is there is that there is no Jesus. Once Jesus is revealed there, then all these things will not exist. Some of you didn't get what I'm saying. But let's go to the high school. What these two people are doing and many others, they're impacting. I want you to look at what God is doing into this high school. I know it's going to touch your heart. Le le join me on the air as we see what God is doing in California in high school. Hey, everybody. We're out here in one of the schools that we're in. There's actually 18 of them out here in the San Fernando Valley. So we're seeing a move of God out here in Southern California. We're inviting everybody into it. You can come out here and come and taste and see, and then you can get ready to take it where your city and all your schools are. So as a youth pastor, it's amazing what we're seeing. We're seeing kids get discipled and then we're raising them up, equipping them, and we're sending them to see many actually leave everything, go across the nations. Hallelujah. As you can see, a lot of people have been baptized. People are getting healed. People are getting saved. Let me tell you, some of you may not really know. That's my background. It's bringing souls in high schools. I believe if, if we cannot get a hold of God during... Uh, 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 during the high school, there's, it's difficult for people to get a hold of God when they are old. They can still get saved, but it's just too difficult. It's easy when the snake is still small to kill it than when the snake is already big. It's easy to bend the tree when it's small than to try to bend the tree when it's already big. I'm telling you what, what Daniel, Danny, and uh, Wesley, they are doing. They are tendering these little trees that have been bending to evil, bending to drugs, but now they're bending to Jesus, mm -hmm. to respect and to honor. Let me tell you, God is doing something about the women, is doing something about the high school, God is doing something about the street ministry. I'm so excited, don't you? Excited to know that, that, that God is doing something in this world? Yes. Are you not uh, uh, excited that you are alive for such a time as this? where so God is doing great. You know, uh, I just want to say, like, uh, how many people do you see saved weekly or a monthly, uh, Wesley? Yes, yeah, so it varies based on our meetings. We usually do a leadership meeting one week, and then we do a huddle the following week. Our leadership meeting is to disciple our leaders on the campuses. These are the leaders that not only go on the campuses with flyers, they not only go on the campus and get the word out and make sure there's announcements, uh, they're also leaders that help lead well, even sharing their stories on the campuses. Um, but we're looking at maybe 500 to 1,000 kids giving their life to Christ on a monthly basis when we're doing big huddles. Now that's the, term, the term, determining factor on that is always based on um, what, which school we're in and which room opens up to us. We've had auditoriums open up to us as of recent, uh, gymnasiums open up to us, oral arts rooms open up to us, but the Lord has been putting on our heart the fall of 2017, next year, the beginning of the year. He's saying it's gonna become stadiums. We're gonna be filling the stadiums like in West Virginia. And they had a great Appalachian revival, I believe they called it. The kids were going out to the stadiums and just led by the spirit. And there was prayer back in the schools and there was a cry and a desperation. So this year, we're really plowing the ground and seeing major impact in these gymnasiums, in these auditoriums, in these halls, in these oral arts rooms. But now we're going to prepare and we're going to get ready for the fall because we believe that it's going to become stadiums filled, football stadiums used for the glory of God, the pigskin and all the times where people glorify man, even the Super Bowl. It's four and a half million dollars for a 30 second commercial and all this mammon based uh, chase. We see that God's going to use all those stadiums and all those places for his glory so that he can pour out his spirit on all flesh. Did you hear what I'm saying? It's fall. The fire of God is going to fall. 
in these stadiums. Let me tell you, God is interested in souls than anything else. God is interested in your education, is interested in your family, is interested in you being the best that God created you to be. But the devil comes to kill and destroy. The reason why people don't want to follow God because they think God will mess up their lives. No, you are messing up your life if you're not following God. God wants to make your life better. You know, it's a, you, know you heard a story about, about Den, uh, Denaro. He got married at early in, in his early at 18. Uh, and no, he wasn't following the Lord. But now, uh, Denaro, when you, when you recommitted your life to the Lord and also through the mastery class, can you just, for a minute or so, then we'll go back to the women movement. We do just share what, what has happened to you as an individual. You know, people want to know your story. Yeah, what I'm thinking of right now is I was just so tired of religion and not, I didn't have that relationship with Jesus. So I left church, I left everything, and God called me back with a gun on my head. And for the first time, I, I felt his presence, I felt him touch me. Uh, as the thieves were stealing my car, um, I, felt, I felt when the thieves told me, give me your keys, give me your, your wallet, and I put my hands up. I felt God saying, from now on, that's going to be your lifestyle. And it has. So I began to see his love. I began to see the father heart. I began to see the supernatural. I began to see that. And, and really, that's really what we're talking about. It's working. Uh, and thank you to Masterclass. Thank you to uh, you, Dr. Gresham. It's working. Uh, I mean, same thing with a background of not finishing high school, a background that I had to go work to provide for for. for for, for the family, I had to go do what a man does at 18. So they didn't have the chance to do that. And to see God taking that and breathing into that and now walking in this couple months into the dreams, into the callings. I'm a musician and God rebirthing that. Uh, and even just, you know, involved with, with Hollywood now, what we're doing in Hollywood because of the mastery class. And that's just amazing. So I just want to invite anybody that is looking to... to to, 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 to that, that thing that you know inside you that, because uh, I remember, I think it was you, Wesley, that you told me, God did not only come to, uh, to take us to heaven and, and save us, but he also came to bring the gold out of us. And I, I've been thinking about that about two weeks ago as we were ministering to somebody on the street. And I believe that there's so much gold inside of, there's so much dream, so much passion, that until you're not in the right place, in the right atmosphere, uh, it's not going to nourish, it's not going to produce. Uh, so I want to encourage you. Um, you can like us on Instagram, Hollywood Mastery Class, uh, and, you know, just get plugged in with us. I believe God is looking for our generation, a generation that will run with a passion, will run with a seal that will run. We're, we're, do not, we're not looking to uh, get into a church service. We're looking for the presence of God, for him to touch us so we can live the supernatural. Jesus said, greater things are the ones he did, we will do. And I see that rising up. I'm so excited, you know. I, you know, my heart, and I feel like after preaching for 24 years the gospel, I feel there is such a need for mentorship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's such a need for leader that can inspire someone, not to suppress somebody, but to help somebody become the best. Because most of the time, we have leaders that want to mentor and disciple, but they don't pull you out of your dust. They put you in the, mm. in the mud, mm. but I want to get you out of the mud. I like yeah. what you said. Hey, I want to get the gold out of you. That mm. has been always my desire. But anyway, that's my passion, and I sense that God is drawing hearts and yes. minds back yes. to the Savior, yes. back to the gospel. Yes. We will see every high school in the United wow. States saved. Yes. And you know yes. what? We're going to yes. see mothers, yes. revival yes. mothers, the yes. birthing mothers. Yes. Yes. You know, without yes. women, we mm. cannot, we, yeah. you know, the, I remember I share this. When I was 16, there was a woman that fasted for me and prayed for me because she believed in my calling. Mm. And she gave me cookies that changed my life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just need women yeah. that can give you cookies. Amen. And they will change your life. That's why I believe having a new women that have a heart for God, yes. they will transfer that same heart into their children Amen. and to their sons and daughters. Yes. You know, Susan, you have been such a great mother. I've, you know, I've known you. I've seen your daughters and, and your sons. 
I've met him. We have had many, you have given him some cookies too. <laughs> I've had some cookies in your house. So I would like you to talk to single women out there. Uh, uh, you know, it says about single women, they will find greater peace and purpose in their lives, in, in, their, in their singleness. We do just talk, to, we have a lot of single women today, like never before. So you know, it's going all over Europe, all over Middle East. Sure. There are so many depressed single women. We do say something to that single woman. Yes, I will. Um, I, I would just encourage you by saying, first of all, uh, the Lord doesn't want you to feel that frustration, and he doesn't want you to feel empty, and he doesn't want you to feel uh, that you're uh, less than or second class. Uh, and what happens, I know many times with single women, is they think a man is going to be the answer to everything, mm. and they're wondering, when is he going to call, and has he texted me, and wow. did he send me a message on Facebook, and, and their lives become consumed yeah. with the desire for the love of a man. Yeah. And where that changes is the Lord says he wants it first to be you and him. Yeah. He wants to be your husband. He wants to be your friend. He wants to be the one who touches every part of your life. He wants to be the one who makes you feel, feel loved and beautiful and cherished. And I would just encourage you to start there. I would encourage you right now to just say, Lord, I just give you all of my heart. Take every part of my heart and please fill it with you. And in that relationship, as you begin there, then the Lord will help you as you go forward into your, not only your purpose as a woman, but eventually in your purpose in your marriage. But it has to begin in that first step. Let the Lord touch you and heal you and fill you and give you great comfort. I just feel the anointing mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. People, I want you to go to Amazon and get this book. You don't have to read it, but buy it for somebody mm -hmm. and put it on the shelf. But if you read it, it will change your life. You know, it's like you are sitting on the gold. If you don't cash it, gold mm -hmm. is nothing. Mm -hmm. You need to do something about it. Go to, to Amazon and also, what's My the website? website? My website is Susan Gelt. G E L T Garcia dot com. And you can buy the book there or you can also register for I have an upcoming seminar, a work actually a workshop. You can register for that as well. You must register for this seminar. She's an incredible speaker, spirit laid, anointed, wonderful prayer warrior. And uh, and I'm so thankful that Susan you came Thank and you. this book is gonna help God's people around the world. That's my heart is to help people. You know, uh, Wesley, we only have like uh, some seconds. And w what can you say to, to, to the high school students there? And can you just invite them to find you? And you and Danny, just invite them to yeah, come? Yeah, if we're addressing the high school students, we're calling you into this movement as the next leaders that are going to mm. lead by example. Yeah. They're going to look like Jesus in your halls, in your classrooms, mm. and wherever you go. So we're calling you out tonight. And we're just declaring over your life yes. that the best yes. is yet to come, that he saved the best wine for last, mm -hmm. and you may mm -hmm. be the final generation. So we're calling you in to that place that God foreordained foreordained before the foundation yes. of the world. And all the volunteers that want to come alongside us, find us. Uh, you can find me at goodnewscaster.com goodnewscaster.com. We're broadcasting the good news of the gospel. Uh, the Keyholders Group is the name of our nonprofit. And if you ever want to partner with us, uh, come alongside, uh, get on goodnewscaster.com and find us. And we want to partner with you and bring you out on these campuses and let you taste and see what the Lord is doing. Come and taste and see and see what the Lord is doing. I release a miracle and healing in your life. You are watching. You will never be the same. See you at the same time at 4 p.m. here in Los Angeles. Jesus is the king. Remember, there is a miracle written with your name on it. Just mm -hmm. call on his name, yeah. Jesus. God bless you.